the name of God, our the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please sit down.
that his lifestyle was very much like that of Jesus. <clears throat> many people have followed him, many people have joined the communities which were formed in his name, the Franciscans. Many have tried uh, to devote their lives to Jesus just as he did. We also remember his, his great love for God's creation. And often when uh, stories are told, or pictures are drawn of him, he's drawn with interacting with birds or with forest animals and other creatures. So he was a very special person. But if we come back to this passage, what is the passage actually asking us to consider? What do we value most in life? The passage continues and Jesus speaks of the difficulty of a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I think Jesus is saying that in fact so often money or its equivalent, wealth, possessions, they become the be all and the end all of a person's life. They take priority in a person's life. I don't think Jesus is condemning the possession of riches as such. But he's only condemning their misuse or what they take us away from. And wealth can so easily set up barriers between us and God. But it can also be used in God's service. The grace of God can so influence a rich person that they use their wealth for good purposes. And there are many examples of that in our world and in our society today. But there is still also lots of poverty. In the case of this rich young man in the gospel, his wealth was spoiling his relationship with God. It would have been the best thing for him to accept Jesus' suggestion, but he refused this form of grace that was offered, and yet Jesus loved him. In the section just before what we read today, Jesus talks about receiving the kingdom of God like a child. He says in verse 15, Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. <clears throat> in other words then, to enter the kingdom of God, to have eternal life, which is what the young man was looking for, we must have knowledge of total dependence on God. And this isn't something we can achieve for ourselves. And perhaps the rich young man does not yet understand this. Hopefully he did come to understand it later in his life, that his possessions are, were ultimately more important to him than his quest to inherit eternal life. And I think that is the point being made in the story. <clears throat> so another question, are we seeking God above all else? Or are we prevented by other things, by our possessions, from coming to God in total commitment. When you look at the letter to the Hebrews, which we heard read this morning, I think it clarifies it a little bit even further. It speaks of the fact that God has, through Jesus, bridged the gap between God and humanity. Jesus is not <clears throat> some distant figure, but he's someone who really knows what it is to be human. <coughs> he knows about the trials and the temptations human existence. So we can turn to him when we are in need. And when we do that, we meet someone who has been, been through the same pain and suffering, and so he will understand. The writer says, the, the writing says, through Jesus, we are able to approach God with confidence, knowing that God is our salvation, and that anything, absolutely anything, is possible with God. Let me read verse 15 again. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. We can do that. So that we may receive mercy and find ways to help us in our time of need. This is what a relationship with Jesus gives to us. It gives us grace to know that we are loved and we are loved unconditionally, and we are loved by God, and that we are accepted just as we are. Living a faithful life is not for the faint-hearted. We will be tested, 
we will at times be separated from God, and we may at times cry out to God, as we heard in our Psalm, Psalm 22 this morning. But the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that when those times come, we must remember that we are called, we are maybe even compelled to be bold in our faith, to have courage, to seek God's grace, and to be assured that help is available in our time of need. So this week I pray that God will speak to us to seriously consider what we value most in life. Let's also thank God for the opportunity to be in a loving relationship with Him. We thank you, God, for fully loving us, even when God fully knows what is in the depths of our heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.